Lori again, and welcome back to my kitchen. I would like to share a recipe with all of you today called burrito in a jar. Now, there has been a recipe going around on the internet and in many canning groups for a couple of years now. And the original recipe actually is quite good. And I am basing my modifications off of that original recipe. Now, I'm going to have the original recipe posted right up here. So if you would like to pause the video and screen capture the original recipe, feel free to do so. Um, and then I will go through the original recipe and what my feelings on it were and then my modified recipe and we'll post that um, for you to view also. So the original recipe is a meal in a jar, meaning after you have assembled your jars and canned them, and I will mention right now that a quart of burrito in a jar is pressure canning 90 minutes, or you will want to hot water bath it for three full hours, okay? And it is pretty much a complete meal in a jar. All you have to do when you go to serve it is you open your jar, heat it up, and it's everything that you could possibly need for a burrito filling. So all you would need is a flour tortilla and whatever condiments or um, things that you would like to put on that as extras, you know, whether it be sour cream, fresh chopped tomatoes, lettuce, you know, cheese, whatever. The burrito filling is all in this jar. So all you have to do is heat and serve it. So the original recipe, um, and I will start out by saying, when I made this a few years back, uh, the original recipe uh, was pretty good. Um, but we, as a family unit, really felt like uh, the only thing that we really noticed in this burrito in a jar was the rice. Um, it was overall pretty dry at the end of the uh, canning session. Um, it wasn't super flavorful. Uh, it didn't have, you know, that typical, I guess, burrito flavor. Um, so it was kind of bland. It was on the bland side. Um, I'm also one of those people that really struggle with uh, eating dry beans. They cause me a lot of intestinal distress. Um, and so with the rice and with the pinto beans, it was just dry and pasty and um, I guess honestly a little disappointing uh, overall. Uh, there was overflow issues also and I really feel that this is because there is so much rice and beans um, and you put your rice and your beans in dry and then <clears throat> they uh, absorb the moisture and expand during the canning process. And uh, I followed the directions absolutely to a T perfectly. And I had a lot of overflow issues. And I had a couple that didn't want to seal um, because of the overflow issues. And I really feel like that is because uh, the original recipe just really states too much rice and too many beans. Um, but like I said, uh, I will go through the original recipe and then I will tell you the changes that I made to modify the recipe uh, to a point where we're, we're really happy with it. And this is actually a staple on our shelves now. Um, I've been doing this I think about two and a half, maybe three years now. And I cannot tell you how much I love having this burrito filling, this, this meal in a jar on our shelves. So on difficult days when I have double booked cleaning jobs and I just come dragging my tail home at the end of the day and I'm just done, instead of calling my husband and saying, hey, can you bring a pizza home? I know that I have convenience food right on my shelves and all I have to do is grab one of those burrito in a jars and heat that up and we have a very quick and very good meal. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to have uh, Roger, my husband, uh, put the recipe right up over here. You can pause the video 
and screen capture that original recipe. I do not take credit for the original recipe. The original recipe is not mine, but this original recipe is what I personally based my modifications off of. And so it's really important um, just to give whoever credit, whoever originally wrote this recipe. This isn't my recipe. This one is the original recipe and I do not lay claim to it, okay? So the original recipe calls for, and this is per quart jar, okay? This isn't an entire recipe. This is per uh, quart jar measurements. This is everything that you put in one single quart jar. So you do this repeatedly until you have enough jars to fill your canner. All right, so we have a half cup of dry pinto beans, one quarter cup of brown rice, dry, okay, uncooked, dry rice, one third cup onions, one third cup peppers, one cup of ground beef, four tablespoons of Rotel tomatoes. Now, Rotel tomatoes are those are, are store-bought cans of tomatoes. It's diced tomatoes that has jalapenos in it, okay? So, um, it's just a fancy name <laughs> for something, honestly, that you can make at home. It's just tomatoes and jalapeno peppers, okay? But anyway, four tablespoons of Rotel tomatoes, one tablespoon of taco seasoning mix, that's the dry taco seasoning mix, which you can also make at home, by the way, um, and one half teaspoon of salt, and then beef broth um, to fill the jar. Now, like I said, I originally made this recipe about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, and, and it was okay. It really was. I'm not saying anything bad about it, but we really felt like it was, number one, really, really dry, and number two, it was just way too much rice in there. I mean, you lost the meat. You, you couldn't even find the meat. 90% of your jar is just full of rice at the end of this canning period, and it was just too much for us. Um, and there was not enough seasoning in there to even really uh, make it taste like uh, like burrito seasoning would be. It was kind of on the bland side, okay? And I want to be really careful about how I say things because I, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to down talk the recipe. And, and like I said, I really want you to make the original recipe um, as written so that you can try it for yourself. And then if after serving and eating it, you kind of have the same opinion as we did, then you can try my modified version of this recipe and see what you think of that. And uh, you be the judge in your own home, okay? So my modified version removed the beans entirely because I have issues eating dry beans. They just cause me a lot of intestinal distress. And so... Um, I replaced the dry beans with lentils, and I cut the rice way back. I increased the seasoning also, and um, instead of going out and purchasing the Rotel tomatoes, I actually substituted my own homemade salsa. Um, so I do want to say that this recipe is actually very versatile. Now. Another thing I will say is that you don't have to use just ground beef. And, and uh, you know, when you do use ground beef, you want to brown that and drain it before you load your jars. Um, today, I'm actually using pork sausage. I have used ground turkey before. I have used ground chicken before. I have actually even used, used leftover roasted chicken and turkey in this. I've used venison in this recipe. I don't care what kind of meat you have. You can use it. It does not have to be just ground beef, okay? It can be any kind of meat you want. Um, you could even make a, a meatless version. If, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, um, you could just leave the meat completely out. Now, another thing I do want to say is that the broth is very versatile. You can use any sort of broth that you want. Beef, chicken, turkey, rabbit, um, even if you want to use a vegetable broth, uh, pork broth, whatever broth you want to use, you go ahead and use it. And so, so you can see 
that this is really a never-ending versatility in this recipe. You can use whatever meat you want. You can use whatever broth you want. And um, again, I'm just going to kind of give you the base of what I did for my modifications, and you can go ahead and change them to suit your needs too. But this is what I found really works well for us. My recipe is omit the pinto beans altogether. I do one quarter cup of dry lentils. I cut that one quarter cup of rice, I cut that down to two tablespoons of dry rice, and yes, you can use white rice. I will be using white rice today. So it doesn't have to be the brown rice, you can use white rice. Um, I did keep the onions and the peppers at the same measurement at one third cup onion, one third cup peppers, and I also kept the measurement of meat at the same one cup of cooked meat. Now whether that would be ground turkey, ground chicken, ground pork, um, uh, roasted chicken, whatever, just one cup of pre-cooked meat, okay? And all of the fat drained off of it. Um, and then I really, I increased, uh, you know, when they call for the four tablespoons of Rotel, I increased mine to five tablespoons. And instead of the Rotel, I use my own homemade salsa, okay? Now, if you have stewed tomatoes and you would like to use those, that would be absolutely fine also. Um, and then the taco seasoning, I increased that by a little bit just because I really felt like there wasn't a whole lot of flavor in this entire recipe. You know, with the amount of rice and everything that is in there, uh, the one tablespoon of taco seasoning just wasn't enough. And so I have increased that to one and a half and sometimes even two tablespoons of taco, dry taco seasoning. And you can make your own dry taco seasoning mix at home. Um, so go ahead and feel free to use that. It doesn't have to be one of those commercially uh, purchased or store purchased um, little uh, packets of taco seasoning. You can use your own homemade taco seasoning. And I do put one half teaspoon salt in it. And then I fill with any broth I have on hand and I am not picky if I am you know like today I am using ground pork because that's what I had on hand I'm using browned ground pork in my burrito in a jar but I'm going to be using chicken stock and beef broth to cover it so you know the broth the flavor of the broth really really doesn't matter the moisture that you're adding with that broth is super important but the flavor of it doesn't matter. So, all right, I'm going to get my uh, tablet out of the way here and then page it down so that you can see exactly what I've got going on. All right, I've got all of my ingredients pretty close at hand. Now, I did not just do green bell peppers. Uh, we cleaned out our garden the other day because we had a frost and so I have banana peppers in here, I have green bell peppers in here, and I even did put in about three jalapenos for just a little added spiciness, okay? But I was kind of careful about the jalapenos. And what I did is I just deseeded and rough chopped all of them and then put them through my, uh, my food processor. And then I also have a bunch of minced up white onion, okay? Because we're gonna do a third cup of the peppers and a third cup of the onion. I have my homemade salsa ready to go, and I have my homemade taco seasoning ready to go. I have my lentils and my rice close at hand, and my salt, and the, the pork sausage, or the ground pork. I have that already browned up, and I have the fat drained off of it, okay? So I will show you how I assemble these, just quick and easy. I better get my uh, my recipe here close so that I can make sure that I'm not making any mistakes. All right, so for the lentils, I did one quarter cup of lentils per quart jar, okay? I have a few leftover ones here, so I'm just gonna use up the bag. Maybe a few more in there just to make sure that I have my measurement right. And 
I just go ahead and I fill each jar just with each ingredient right away. one quarter cup of lentils in each one of my jars. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of dry rice per jar and that I think is a small enough measurement I can just get it in. Two tablespoons of dry rice. Now you can use brown rice or you can use white rice. So two per quart All right, and then we have one third cup of peppers and one third cup of onions. So there we have our peppers. Now we're going to go on to add our one third cup of onions. Alrighty, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our one cup of meat. All right, and I'm going to say at this point in time, I browned up four pounds of uh, ground pork sausage, and it looks like I have about close to a pound left. So for seven quarts, you could probably get by on three pounds of meat, just equally distribute it, okay? Now we're going to, well, I need something to wipe my hands on here. There's my towel. Get my canner back over here in place. And now I'm going to add the salt, which is one half teaspoon of salt per quart jar.
And then we are going to do one and a half tablespoon of taco seasoning. Now, I use my own homemade taco seasoning. You can purchase it if you want. It's just totally up to you. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add one to each jar. And then I'm going to go back and add a half. Now about a half tea, or half tablespoon extra for each jar. All right. Now our dry ingredients are complete. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add either if you want to use the Rotel tomatoes or if you, like me, want to use your own homemade salsa, I do five tablespoons per quart jar. All right, out of a quart of salsa, I fell a little bit short there. On my uh, salsa. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add just a little extra taco seasoning flavor to make up for the missing tomatoes in that particular jar. All righty, now comes the magic. We've got all of our ingredients in our jars, just layered in there as I, uh, as I read them off to you. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to pour in our broth. And like I said, I have uh, a little bit of beef broth today and a little bit of chicken broth. So it really does not matter what flavor of broth you are using. And what I like to do is I like to pour that broth pretty much up to the same level as all of my ingredients. And then I personally like to give this whole thing a good stir. Just to incorporate all the lentils and the rice. And then I continue filling to one inch headspace. And you really want to make sure that you leave actually you know what I'm going to tell you about one and a half inch headspace because like I said you know even though I've cut down uh, with the lentils and the rice this does expand quite a bit so I'm going to leave one and a half inch headspace I think I'm closer to two on that one so we'll just add a little bit more there we go The, these mayo jars are just a little bit more than a quart, so I'm actually going to find my lentils, and I might add just a couple more little tiny spoonfuls of lentils, just because these old mayo jars are a little bit more, like I said, than a quart. I'm going to add just a little bit of more rice too, but not much. That's all part of that modifying. 
that we can do when we're canning. I know these jars hold more than a regular quart does, so I just added a little bit more dry ingredient. I could have added a little bit more meat in this one too, but I guess that's an afterthought. Now that I've added my rice and my lentils, I'll just leave it be. Okay, now here's a perfect example too. I'm filling my last jar and I ran out of broth. Now I do have more broth, unopened broth. I've got an un unopened one right here, but I really don't want to open this in order to just finish this one jar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bit of water to just complete filling this jar instead of opening a whole new box of broth and then having to use that remaining broth up in the next few days. Um, so I'm going to stop the camera and be right back with some water. All right guys, so I'm back with my water and I'm just going to finish filling this jar with a little bit of water. Bring it to that one and a half inch head space. These look wonderful. Get that lentil in there. All right. So now, just as per the norm, you just want to simply wipe your rims well and place your flat and ring and place it in your canner. I also want to say today um, that I am using four jars lids and I have been super, super impressed with these. Ball and Kerr have completely lost my trust. Um, I have been using Ball and Kerr for years and it just seems like their manufacturing standards have just gone down to be, uh, in my personal opinion, just garbage. And uh, in my quest to find better canning jars, I did, did come across these four jars online through uh, walmart.com. They are actually a really good value and I have been using them for over six months now and I have not had any seal failures on my shelf. Um, you know, normally, years and years ago, I never had seal failures at all using Ball and Kerr, but uh, since 2020 and the cheaper manufacturing standards that have come to be, um, you know, I can achieve a really good seal uh, after the processing in the canner, but then I was losing jars of food on the shelf because the seals were coming undone, and I swear, now remember I've been canning for a whole lot of years here. Uh, I swear that that is because of the ball and the cur quality just um, 
substandard, substandard manufacturing quality. Uh, but anyway, so I have all of my jars now wiped and uh, the lids and the rings are on them. And so now all I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my canner uh, to a vent, get my lid on. Bring my pressure canner to a vent and vent for 10 minutes. Vent it for 10 minutes and then I'm going to bring it up to the appropriate pressure uh, which in my altitude, my area and my altitude is uh, 10 pounds of pressure. I'm going to be using my little handy dandy adjustable weight. Um, this is another thing that I would like to share with you today. Um, I use, uh, exclusively I use Presto canners, uh, Presto uh, pressure canners. And Presto canners come with a standard weight. They call this a regulator, but us old people call it a weight. They come with a standard 15 pound weight, okay? You can go on Amazon or uh, wherever you would like to shop and you can find these handy dandy little three piece adjustable weights. And uh, just make sure that it is compatible with your model of canner. I know that I have uh, three or four different Presto canners and I know that these adjustable weights um, fit on all of my Presto models um, because the weight pipe vent is all uh, the same size on on all of the Presto canners. But anyway, this little three-piece uh, uh, three piece weight is a gem to me. Each piece of the three-piece weight is five pounds, okay? So you have your center stem, which is five, and then you have two rings that are five. Now, if you are like me and you do not want to trust your readable gauge on the canner, you can get one of these three-piece adjustable weights, and you can take one ring off in order to make it a 10-pound weight. And you can walk away from your canner, and if you hear that weight just a jiggling away happily, you know that you are safely at 10 pounds of pressure and you don't have to sit here and babysit reading that gauge at all. So I highly suggest these. These are absolutely amazing things. So like I said today, I'm going to vent my canner for 10 minutes and then I'm going to place my 10 pound weight and I'm going to pressure can my quarts of burrito in a jar for 90 minutes, okay? And if you are doing uh, if you are doing pint jars, I do not have the measurements of the ingredients that would go into a pint jar. But obviously, you would just cut all of the me measurements that I just gave you. You would cut them completely in half. Okay, a quart jar is four cups. A pint jar is two cups. So just cut the filling for each jar completely in half to do pint jars. Pint jars would be PC. Uh, pressure can 75 minutes court jars are pressure canned 90 minutes or you can hot water bath either one of those size jars for three hours for your burrito in a jar so I'm going to start my heat and heat it up slowly get it to a vent vent it for 10 minutes and then get it up to weight after placing my weight and pressure can for 90 minutes I will be back when they are done all right, so I am back. I finished my 90 minute um, pressure canning session on the burrito in a jar, and I allowed my canner to cool down completely, and then I removed my jars, allowed them to seal. It's been approximately 16, 17 hours now. Um, I'm not one of those people that absolutely wait 24 hours, um, but I do wait at least 12, if not more. And if the jars still even feel slightly warm, um, I don't mess with them until they're just cool. But it's uh, cooler in the house right now. We're um, entering fall, and it's pretty cool in here. So they did cool down rather quickly. Um, but anyway, I had 100% seal. Uh, I I had 100% success sealing on all of my jars. And um, after they were cool and sealed, I did remove the rings and I just washed the jars up. Now I do this anytime I'm canning, you know, after your jars seal, it's really a good practice to remove those bands and wash your jars. And I just take them over into a sudsy sink 
of water and wash them just like you would do with dishes. And then I allow them to dry again and then I label and I place them on the shelves. Now the reason why um, a lot of us do that is because if you do have a little bit of siphoning, um, that food can kind of get caught on, on like the rings of your jars underneath underneath where your screw on band is food particles can get stuck underneath there and if you don't wash that off in storage that will mold and also draw bugs so it's always just a really good practice to after you're done canning and your jars have sealed and cooled just give them a quick wash up in a little bit of sudsy sudsy water it doesn't have to be super hot water um, just warm sudsy water and make sure that those jars are nice and clean. But anyway, I'm going to page down because I want to show you what the results are on um, my modified version of burrito in, the, in a jar here. Um, hopefully, the yep, the camera's picking it up really nice today. Um, as you can see, even with only the three tablespoons of rice, you can see that that is plenty of rice in that jar. But you can also see that mine is pretty moist. We didn't care for the original. The original recipe was awfully dry and pasty. And so by cutting down the rice and um, by eliminating the beans and using lentils instead, and it, I did increase, uh, you know, the tomato by a little bit also. But anyway, I just feel like it's just a moisture, um, a moisture product in the end. And we didn't like how dry and pasty the original recipe was. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to pop this jar open for you. Make sure I can find a ledge there. All righty. And I'll show you what this looks like. Oh, that smells so good. All right, without even mixing it up, <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can get this up to the camera so that you can see really well. Can you see the lentils are still completely intact, all the little, all the little round lentils? Lentils can really, really well. And it's, it's plenty moist, and yet it's not watery. And hopefully you can see all of the uh, the rice in there also. It's just, I think that this is just a perfect balance. It's not runny, and yet it's not dry and thick and pasty. This is just a perfect burrito filling, honestly. Just gorgeous. And it smells so good, and it tastes so good. Um, so, like I said, there you have a meal in a jar. Um, all we do, personally, is... Uh, we take a flour tortilla, I heat this up, me and my camera, camera skills, guys, <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous, but anyway, um, we just take flour tortillas, I heat the filling as is, I just reheat it, take a flour, flour tortilla and, you know, just put whatever you love to have on a burrito. Um, we do sour cream, fresh lettuce, uh, grated cheese. Um, sometimes I'll even chop up some extra fresh tomatoes to put on there. You know, add hot sauce, whatever. Um, it's actually, it's really wonderful stuff. I've also served this over, um, over uh, crispy tater tots and uh, french fries also. And then sprinkled cheese over the top of that. Um, really, really, really good stuff. So anyway, like I said, my challenge to you is, you know, feel free and please do actually make the recipe in its original form and see what you think of that. And if, like I said, if you don't, you know, if you kind of have the same opinion that we did with the original recipe or you have overflow, overflow issues, and your jars don't want to seal just because there's so much rice and beans in there. Um, you know, try out mine. Um, also, if you have problems with beans, with dry beans, but you can eat lentils, um, 
this maybe would be a good option for some of you that have issues like I do with the beans. Uh, so anyway, at any rate, I hope that all of the comparison and all of the information that I've given you today is helpful to you. Um, if you do try my recipe, I hope you sincerely enjoy it. And um, until we meet again, God bless you all and happy canning, everybody.